that's why we're going live. So we're about to we're about to join us. We're about to go live. Hello. Say so, hey, gonna join us. We're about to start soon. We're about to start soon. Looking forward to speaking to you. Hope to entertain you on this beautiful day in Southern California. It never rains in Southern California. Woo! If you've just joined us, thank you Woo! for joining us. We're about to start the that? live show in just a moment. Stay tuned. Here we go. We're gonna get started. Oh my goodness gracious, did you see that golf swing? You were at Golf Live with the founder, the owner, Woo! the one, the only, gol golf mecha man, Mark Solomon. Mark, welcome. Hello everybody, hope everybody is healthy, hope everybody is safe. I got Facebook right here, and I got YouTube right here. I want to hear from both. There's a battle, which is better, Facebook or YouTube, throw it in. We hope everybody is healthy at home. We are in beautiful Indian Wells, California. Feels more like Green Bay in June than it does in Southern California. But we are here because we know people are idle. And idle souls are not good. So we're gonna be here hoping to bring you some entertainment, bring some smiles to you. Think about playing golf. And I'm with two wonderful people, two instructors that work for our company, Golf Made Simple. My name, by the way, I apologize, is Mark. Mark Solomon, Golf Made Simple. We're here to entertain you today. And I wanna say hello to everybody that has been signed up for a GMS class. And I just wanna thank you for being just so cool and so understanding of the situation and accepting to postpone your stay with us because this is a tough time for small businesses. But let's get on to good things. Come on over here. Come look at these two instructors. Let me introduce you to them. Jordy, please come in. What I have today, I have Trish Kumar who is from originally Bangalore, India, and she is a GMS instructor, just started with us. And it's so great to have her on our team. Say hello, please. Uh, I'm Trisha Kumar from India, but I did come over to Southern California to get my uh, professional golfers management degree, and then I started working with GMS. It's been an absolute journey from India to California could have been better. And next to me here, Mr. Cool, Cool Hand Luke, Jordan Hamlin. Jordan's grandfather was a PGA member. His father is a PGA member up in Idaho in the Snake River area. And Jordan's on the road to be a PGA member too. Phenomenal instructor and he's a player. Say something a little bit about yourself, man. Yeah, glad to be here. Here from Twin Falls, Idaho, just like Mark said. Grew up in the golf industry. Been working at a golf course, been living out at a golf course since I can remember. I grew up out there. Spent every single summer out there. It was like my home away from home. So I'm glad to be out here teaching. So what we're gonna do today, just to give you an idea is, well, listen, we're blessed. We're outside, we can be hitting golf balls. These two, have amazingly beautiful swings. Maybe you tuned in a little early and saw them warming up. Just before they warmed up, they did some stretching. And we wanna go over some stretching because listen, this, this is really ugly day out here. I mean, this is, but we're still outside and we're still blessed. What do you do before you go play golf? Are you one of these people that just get out of the car, walk up to pay? go to the range and just start swinging well if you are you're you're not helping your swing because your body's not ready and if your body isn't ready all those mechanics that you tried to practice they won't be in sync so let's get the body fluid let's get it 
moving. Let's get it so that it is um, free flowing and stretched out. So I'm gonna go over some stretches with these two. We're gonna do it real fast, but just to give you an idea of what you can do. And then we're gonna watch some really beautiful swings. We're gonna talk a little golf. And this is also interactive. Both on Facebook and on YouTube, there are areas there where you can write comments. In those comments, we wanna know what you wanna talk about in golf. What's happening in your golf swing? Are you having a slice and can't get rid of it? Are you having trouble in the sand? We got an amazing sand bunker right behind here and that we could go to. We could do green reading, we could do putting, we could do downhill chips, we could do side hill lies. We got rough, we got Indian Wells Golf Resort here. And we wanna hear from you but we're gonna start for some stretching. So, what's the key to stretching that I've seen over the years? People start too hard too soon. Start light. Your muscles need time to what? To, to loosen up. You can't just go and start doing this and doing it hard because you're gonna hurt something. So it's to start light. So we're gonna, the three of us are gonna do it together. They're gonna stand right next to me here separate a little social distancing exercise distancing <laughs> and one thing I learned I, I just learned this stretch I'm still trying to learn every day and I just learned this at Bikram yoga and this is pretty much how we start but basically you get your feet close they say put your feet touching I, I just don't like that I like it like this and then just bring your arms up like this over your head and if you're at home do it come on let's go right arms up like this get your arms pretty much against your ears and then just do this you move your hip a little this way and then let your upper body bend a little this way don't strain and then come back up here and do it like this now at Bikram they got you holding it and it's 105 in there <laughs> and you're sweating but here you could just do this now as you do it, a couple of things, and I'll, I'll let them continue as I talk, but as you look, you want to get it, so Jordan's just up like this, you get those arms stretched, because the more you stretch the arms, the more you're also stretching back here, yeah. right? You feel the difference? Oh, absolutely. And then when he does, then it's a little this, and then you get this bend, and what are you stretching? You're stretching these muscles all down in here, all down there. Sorry, I didn't mean to get a little friendly up here. <laughs> I did, especially during this time. But we do that stretch. That's gonna stretch everything out here for you in this area. And why is it important to do that? Because, well, what's twisting? Just because you're, go you're going this way, it's gonna help the twisting. All right, as we go, then what can we do? Well, I, I feel we gotta get the legs going a little bit. So this is what I say you do. You do it as slow as you can. Just set up, get your feet a little apart like this. Get your weight equal between your toes and your heels and just kind of and squat down as much as you can do it as slowly as you can because i feel when you do it real slowly the muscles are getting chance to to really get a stretch but they're also strengthening as you do it and do it slow and you just do it to what you can i mean if you're good you can hold it here if you want but just get that stretch and then go up real slow. What I see is I see people when they go stretch for golf, they get up like this. You guys have probably seen they get and they're uh, uh, they're like doing calisthenics. I just did that right now and I felt that in my muscles. It's not good. All right, as we go, then let's now get some movement. And this is something I think you could do in the gym with weights. But as you go, just stand here like this, get set up. And now you're just going to be going just like hip uh, halfway up, just here and here and just let everything do it slowly. And what's that doing is it's not just waking this up here, it's waking all of this up here. And I'm also allowing me to feel the weight movement of my body, to feel my center moving back and forth. So in a sense, we're also practicing the golf swing. We could go on and on. I don't want to bore you with all the stretches, 
but I just a few. Now these guys are gonna hit some golf balls and let's talk some golf. Let's have some fun. Let's go for it. Don't be afraid to tell us where you guys are listening in from. Write it in the comments right now, like this and share this page. So we just got a question from Wendell McCaskill. Thank you, Wendell. My last two instructors have wanted me to pull with my left side. However, I'm very right side dominant and want to learn how to hit it more with my right side as I feel that is where my power is. I am 70 and my drives go only 180 to $200. 200 yards. 200 yards, <laughs> dollars. <laughs> This is gonna cost you $200. <laughs> that is such a great question. I'm, we're gonna work with Trisha on that. There's, and what it means is this, most people that are out there are right side dominant. Predominantly everything you do is with your right side. But in golf, many people are taught, oh, pull with your left side, pull with your left arm. And as much as you try, you can't. Why? That's your non-dominant side. So basically, you have a strong side that's very coordinated, and you have a weak side that is dumb, uncoordinated, doesn't know how to work with your body as well as this side. And that's a problem in the golf swing. Not for a swing like that, but for most of us. And what we, we believe is that if you're having trouble getting through the golf ball, finishing your swing with your follow through, one of the reasons is your left side's not getting through. When you watch Jordan swing, his left side has no problem getting through. His left side is, is look where that left side is. It's where the right side started, <laughs> right? It's where the right side started. So how did he do that? Well, he did that through thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of practice, probably. Yeah. How can you do it? You're 70 years old, Wendell. You hit it 180 to 200, which is not to be embarrassed about, but you want to hit it farther. Well, how do you get that? Well, we have a drill for that. Set up, Jordan, please. We have a drill called the symmetrical drill. And what it is, Jordan, take off, get set up for it. And what Jordan's gonna do is he's gonna swing back, swing through, and hold it. Now, from holding in this position, he can take his left hand and put it on without having to move his body at all. Now go back and set up again, please. Now he's gonna take his left hand, take off his right, and he's gonna do this correctly. He's gonna do the same thing. Swing back, swing through, hold it. Now, he doesn't have to move any part of his body to get his hand on the club except for his hand. And that's great. What do we see? nine out of ten people that come to see yeah. us set up they do it well with their right hand go ahead do that fast and they can do it just like that now do with the left and show it what we always see they're like that and they can't grab onto the club as easily now why is that that's because come on down this side is not educated that side's educated it's just like if I was right-handed and I was gonna, excuse me one second, and I was gonna throw this ball. If I do, knew how to throw this ball, I wouldn't be able to throw it farther with my right hand just because it's stronger than my left hand. I'd be able to throw it farther because my body is more coordinated to work with that action. And my right side goes through and my left side has learned how to get out of the way. If I did it with my left hand as a righty, I wouldn't know how to move through because this side is not educated. Well, the same thing happens in your golf swing. 
in your golf swing, when you're trying to swing and this doesn't know how to get out of the way, what happens is, as people swing and this doesn't know how to get out of the way, what oftentimes is somebody's not flexible, have bad hips, bad back, they swing, they can get here, the body can't get out of the way, so they end up like this, their center of gravity back here, the club's either gonna hit the ground here or they're gonna come over the top. That's a lot of information, but what I'm trying to say is we gotta educate this left side. We're gonna use this drill, Jordan, come on back, and we're gonna show you how to do it together, right? So I think a really good place to have the camera would be if we could have it right about here and then you can get the, you'll get a good view of this. And Wendell, when you're doing this drill, make sure you're concentrating what feels so good when you're doing it with your right side. What makes that right side so much easier to do this drill? And let that stronger side of your body start to train the weaker side of your body. Rather than trying to just train this weaker side of your body out of the blue, let that right side start to train this weaker side. How did it feel so much easier when I put the club in my right hand, my stronger side of my body, my more coordinated side of my body, what felt I'm, so much I'm easier there? here for a while. Boy, that right side just pushed my left side completely out of the way, and that's how it ended up all the way behind my shoulders here. I can place that left arm on there. Now I'm going to feel the exact same thing with my left side of my body. How did it feel with that right side? How do I do it with my left side now? Boy, that shoulder got to about the same spot over here. Can I place my right hand on there? I could do it. So continue to let that stronger side of your body train the weaker side of your body when you're doing this drill. Great question. I hope that answered it. It is raining. We got cameras moving everywhere. <laughs> so I hope we did uh, get it for you on that. We just had a great question. I think it's Steve Polly. Steve he just talked about how to get out of the sand in hard packed. It might get pretty hard packed here soon. So what we're going to do is we'll wait a little bit on that one until it gets a little more hard packed, but we're going to go into the sand. Keep sending in your questions. Right now, we're going back to hitting some golf balls. So come on back and let's talk some golf. Interesting question I have. Who? Who's gonna win the Masters this year? The 2020. Keep going back, hit balls, guys. 2020, who's gonna win this year? I like to know. Wendell, I appreciate that. Wendell said the check's in the mail, $200. M-A-R-C-S-O-L-O-M-O-N. Or you can make it out to cash. Thank you. Trisha has an amazingly good swing. Ladies, we are talking to you right now. We do believe at GMS that most golf instruction out there is totally biased, totally biased to the male body, the male PGA Tour player. I believe the golf industry has left women behind. And I do believe we need to put more effort into developing young women professionals so that we make it golf comfortable and friendly for women to play. Because I look at yoga studios around that I've been to and it's a great group for women to get together, have some mindfulness, and get this close community. And I see that at golf courses around the U.S. We need more women to play. What a great place. Now, maybe when it's, when it's sunny, not rainy, but what? Where would you rather be? Inside in a room or out here finding your mindfulness? This golf swing with this young lady, look at this. Can we get an angle from this side so people can look at her, try to see what impact looks like with this golf swing? Woo! That is about 
That's about as straight as you can hit a golf ball. That's Annika straight. Talking to, to the ladies out there, Tricia, when you see women uh, playing and, and teaching with them, do you ever see women have any trouble with distance or slicing or what? Yes, yes, absolutely. I always see women struggling with the slice too. Now, what's causing that slice? Let's come back, reverse engineer it a little bit and say, okay, okay, well, the ball's going right, right? So, the ball's spinning right. What's causing the spin right? Because the club face is pointing right. That's making the ball also go right yes because it's going right now it's gonna go into the roughs it, it gets it much more harder to get out of the roughs because we women lack the strength in the wrist to get it out also we're losing distance because it's going right now why is it going right because the club face is pointing right how can you correct that club face pointing right can be different for each person because each person's club or each person's swing is different. Just because uh, a tip out there worked for Becky doesn't mean it's gonna work out there for you too, right? So it can, it can be the grip, it can be the start of the back swing, it can be the top of the back swing, or the transfer into it. So it's different for each person. Mark, what, what, what would you think about that? Would you like to add something to it? I would say this. My number one, one of my number ones, I've got many number ones, in seeing women and their faults. I feel like men have scared women from swinging by, especially husbands. God, husbands, you ruin your <laughs> wife's golf swings <laughs> worse than anything by telling them, Oh, keep your head still. Oh, you're swaying. Stop swaying, Ethel. Stop swaying. I, I, you hear it all the time. And when that happens, what happens to the, to the lady? She starts becoming very stiff and swaying very... And, and now she becomes nothing but armsy because she's swinging like this because she's so scared about her husband yelling at her for swaying or moving her head, God forbid, that she can't swing and she has no power. And because of that arm motion going like that, may I borrow this please? Sure. Because of that arm motion and not moving and not power, the club often comes down like this. I don't know if you can get that on the camera. It comes down like that. And as Trisha says, that creates a side spin to the right because the club is often coming across this way also. So it's often going, coming down, across. Most people call this coming from the outside in, right? But outside in doesn't cause a slice or a curve of the ball as much as club face. I believe club face is 70% of direction and swing path 30. If I'm wrong, I apologize if I'm a few percentage off, but somewhere in that general area. And what I find with the women, when they're standing there so stiff, because they're scared of moving too much this way or moving too much this way, they stand like this. Anybody see where it went? <laughs> and they can't see it because their eye is where? stuck on that ball and they can't get any power and that brings me to a point that a really 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 good friend I haven't seen in a while and I miss him Jim Anderson in Green Bay Wisconsin just wrote and said that his swing speed has gone from he just got measured it went from I believe it was like 106, what? 106 to 97 Jim Anderson is a really good player when he came to us, he was like, I believe an 8.6 came, got it down to a 1.3. If I'm wrong, please write it in, Jim. And, um, but you know, Jim, that was, is getting up there a little bit in age and he's asking about swing speed. So how do we get more swing speed and power? And one of those things is not worrying. This is for guys also, not worrying about 
keeping your head so still. And I, I want to show you this. Uh, Jordan, can you come in, please, and get sure. set up right here? Yeah, just before we get started, I want to say hi to Steve and Deborah from Texas. I played college golf down in Odessa, Texas. So hopefully it's not raining down there. Hopefully the wind's not blowing too hot either. This is like Odessa yeah. in what time of year? Never. No. no. Hey, if the wind was blowing and these cameras were blowing everywhere, it'd be just like Odessa. Make sure you hit a like and subscribe and share this page, too. When you're working the... the, the Everybody is head down, head down, head down. I am telling you with the most sincerity, the most absolute sincerity, that is the biggest fallacy, myth, I'm not going to curse, in golf. You can't keep your head still. It doesn't happen. There's not a player in time that has been able to do it successfully. And as much as Jack Nicklaus is the greatest, him and Tiger, and he said that he kept his head still, it wasn't. That's the feel that Jack had. It, it, but it's not what he did. And because of the flexibility, especially of uh, Red War people, where we don't have the flexibility of the athletes that are playing on the PGA and LPGA Tour, where they're doing Pilates and yoga, and their bodies have been conditioned to swing this way for, since they've been this year, since they've been his, his age, when he started this big, and his daddy's golf course, grandpa's golf course, yeah. probably. And they have that, so they can make these moves. But the people that are, most of you that are watching this, the flexibility, the strength, the coordination, the balance, the practice time, you, you, you're not gonna make those. And a lot of people don't hit the ball far enough. They hit it so short because you're trying to keep this thing so still and you can't. And so Jordan's gonna set up to a golf ball right here. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna hold this noggin. I am not gonna let it move. And I'm gonna hold on hard. And he's gonna slowly try to take a backswing. So ready? Ready. Slowly, go. Now, do not move. He's got a complete backswing, doesn't he? Where's his weight? Where's his weight? Does anybody here have, they call that a reverse pivot in golf when you get that far? And does anybody have the trouble when you swing and you keep your head still? And now you're over here. Now from over here, where am I gonna go? I'm gonna either go straight into the ground or what else am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to fall back to avoid chopping it to the ground or what else? Well the only way I can get to the golf ball from here without hitting the ground first is to come which way? Over the top, outside in, and I don't know if there's anybody that's listening to this has haven't contracted the outside in virus. <laughs> Everybody's being told they got it, and, and a lot of golf lessons are built on it. And then you're told to what? Drop in the slot, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well. Or they overdo it so much. Sorry to interrupt yeah, you. Go. They overdo it so much. Absolutely. They're talking you know, so much about, I lift my head every single time, Jordan. I'm trying to keep my head down. They're trying to keep their head down so long and they're over-exaggerating keeping their head down on their backswing. They can do all those different things Mark was talking about, but they can also, all right, let's keep my head down as much as I possibly can on the backswing. The majority of golfers 
their head is going to get closer to the golf ball. They're trying to keep their head down and their head still, and they make a backswing and their head gets so close to the golf ball because they're concentrating so much on trying to keep that head still. Where do they have to go from here? There's only one way to go. Golf's a game of opposites. You're going to start going up this direction with your center of gravity is falling back behind the golf ball, and a number of bad shots can happen. So that one swing thought that you were trying to work on is actually sometimes hurting your golf game more than helping it the majority of the time out there. Understand what they're trying to talk about when they keep, tell you to keep your head still. But when you overdo it, you can get all those things Mark was talking about, or you can get that head starting to go down towards the ground on their backswing. Then on the downswing, where's it gonna go? Up this way. Jordan, I'm lifting my head every single time. I'm trying to keep my head down as long as I possibly can. But then you're lifting up, it's a chain reaction. Terry and Iris, it's like the Nynamo up in Vancouver Island out here. This is crazy. We got a question earlier about hitting out of the sand. This man is fantastic out of the sand. So we're going to turn around. Jordan's going to get a sand wedge. We're going to hit out of the sand. Come on. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A lot of people, as you get into the sand, a lot of people have trouble out of the sand, especially, well, when the conditions aren't great. And here, the conditions, well, they're not terrible. But getting out of the sand, what is it? Somebody uh, wrote in, Greg Files. Greg, if you, if you got online, love to uh, thank you for writing in. He wrote an email, Greg Files comes to GMS multiple times. Uh, I was asking about how to get out of the sand and can you talk a little bit about bounce? Well, that's what we're gonna do today. What gets the golf ball out of the sand? What's it get out of the sand? What I was told growing up, Jordan, was to get the ball out of the sand, the sand gets the ball out of it, the, gets it out. You gotta hit the sand and the sand's gonna make it go out. Well, let's test that theory. Let's test that. I'm going to hit this sand. Fly. Wait. I've been told I paid money as it. My parents paid money. And I was, they paid money, and I learned the sand gets it out. Now, here, let me try. Now, I might not have the swing speed, right? But it's the sand, and how much more? Well, at least that move, but I actually bladed down my that fingers. That's really similar <laughs> to a lot of golf shots that I see. So is it the sand that gets it out? No, it's not. And I understand why people say that, but it's really not. What gets the sand out? The ball out. May I borrow that, please? We're all told, hit a couple inches behind the sand, the ball, in the sand. So if I'm hitting it out, if I'm hitting it that way, so you guys have a good angle, that I should swing, hit the sand somewhere around here, and the sand knocks it out. I am telling you, that is a fantasy. What the sand is doing is, all it's doing is creating a buffer on your club so that the ball doesn't hit the metal of your club and fly over the green. What you're doing is you're swinging, you're coming down, you're hitting this sand. And if you guys can really get a good photo, a shot of this club right here and the ball, what that's showing is what you're, I'm doing is I'm creating a buffer so that the power of the swing is still hitting the ball, but is putting this sand pillow there so that the ball doesn't go screaming over the green. If you can take your thinking on not trying to use the sand to get it out, but just build that up, what it will do is it will help you in regular conditions 
it will help you in very fluffy, sugary sand conditions where there is a lot of sand and it will help you not on complete hard pan but if there's a dusting of sand on there it will help you because now you're not chopping to get through and a lot of that also goes back to the makeup of a sand wedge many people we see when they come to see us they they don't really have a sand wedge it says an S on the bottom, but it's, it's more like a 13 iron. It was made to match your set so the club company can sell you. What we really do believe in here at GMA, I believe, is you should get a wedge that's made for the sand, but also for your short game around. And Jordan here has, Jordan has a Titleist uh, Bob Boki. I mean, amazing club. A lot of guys on, gals on tour probably use this. And what the characteristics of it that make it so good is, is you can see the shape of it. It's a little bit different. And one of those things that is, you'll notice this top line right here, I don't know if you guys can see that, is thin. Like most clubs that are perimeter weighted where you guys are hitting, it's, it's, there's a lot of weight around, distributed around the outside. Here, what they've done is they take all the weight that was up here and where did they move it? Down here. So you see that big bulk of weight right there. Well, they moved all that weight there. Why did they move the weight there? They wanted to put the weight under the ball so it's easier for it to get up in the air quicker. So having a proper sand wedge is really important. And then it, I'm not going to try to be an engineer here because I'm certainly not but just the aerodynamics and how the club is made you can see how it's real slanted right here well why is that good you don't want boxy because boxy what gets stuck in the sand so you want something that's more dynamic in that sense and that's why these clubs are really good now um, Greg was asking somebody was asking about bounce what is bounce of your club? Many people are always like, what's my bounce? What kind of bounce should I get? I play in fluffy sand, so I have one type of bounce, et cetera, et cetera. And it does, it does really make a difference because the, the players on the tour, from what I'm told, because uh, I don't go out there much, is they switch a lot of their wedges and the bounce of their wedges based on the golf courses they're playing whether it's thin lies on the grass, if it's a lot of grass, if it is uh, thin bunkers or a lot of sand, they switch it. So what is what should you have? Well, what is bounce? Bounce is, in my best definition, is if you take a club and you hold it straight up and down like this, you have the leading edge of the club, which is right over here where the where the face meets the sole, that sharp edge. And you have the trailing edge back here. If you hold the club straight up and down, there is an angle from the highest point. I'll get into close here. There's an angle from the highest point and it angles that way. So I'll do it for you guys too on Facebook. Hey, Facebook. I don't even have a Facebook account. All right, there, and it goes down like that. Well. In my definition, what I know, which is not much, the degree of angle difference from that highest to that lowest is the degree of bounce. Now, what is bounce for? Bounce is for to alleviate dig. So if you're gonna swing and you didn't have bounce, your leading edge would dig in and continue to dig in. When you have bounce, this part again, that's right here, that's higher than this part. What that means is as a club comes down, that back part is gonna hit the ground first instead of digging in. And that is what your bounce is. So what type of bounce? Well, if you play on golf courses where there's not a lot of sand, meaning it's the depth of it is not much. There's not enough depth. I'm moving back, Trisha, I'm sorry. 
If you don't have enough sand, you don't, what you don't want is bounce. If it's more hard underneath, if you have a lot of bounce, the club will hit the ground, it can't dig in, and the club will bounce up and skull the ball. If you play on a course that has a lot of sand and it's deep, deep you want a club with more bounce. And it's really important to remember that. I apologize, there's a lot of commotion. It's starting to rain here, man. <laughs> We're gonna have hard hand buys here. Keep writing your questions. Sorry, I'm a little distracted right there. Keep writing your questions. We are here for you. Where am I going right now? Jordan's gonna hit a shot. Apologize. Great idea. I'm gonna yeah. get a little uh, cover. <laughs> Jordan, get one up there, man. It'd be great if you can get an angle right in front of him. So pretty hard pan in here. I've, obviously, it's been raining. And now, obviously, when it rains, I shouldn't say obviously, but when it is raining this hard and it's this packed down, you can absolutely expect for this golf ball to come out of bunker pretty hot. So I'm not going to take quite as full of the swing. I'm not going to shorten my swing by any measure. But I'm going to make just a little bit less swing here as far as length of swing. I'm not slowing my swing down because I'm expecting this golf ball to come out a little bit hot out of the front. That's pretty good. <laughs> now, Jordan, that was a great shot. Here we go, man. You good? I'm ready. All right. Has anybody ever had a shot like that? That's not terrible. I mean, I could step on it. Hey, by the way, if you're out there, give us a like. Give us a like. In this rain, give us a like, please. Throw some love. Share this with your friends. You have a lie like that. What do you do? Well, let's see how this guy does it and then we'll explain. Yeah, and just as I'm going through it, I'll kind of piece it together through it. Just like Mark was saying, when you're back there and you're on a flat line when the golf ball isn't buried, you have to plan to get a little bit of sand in between your club face and the golf ball to take some of that speed off the golf ball. As you can tell right here, because Mark gave me this perfect lie out here, I don't need to plan for any of that because I'm going to get plenty of sand in between the club face and the golf ball with that golf ball being buried right now. So I'm going to hit this one. I'm not going to give it quite as much cushion. Oh my goodness. Go in. Go in. Woo! Almost. Good shot. Three feet to the left and a little by. <laughs> wow. How impressive is that? Now, this is what I... I want you to think about all of you that are watching this. That's not an easy shot. He's doing it live in front of all of y'all. Do you understand what the pressure is on a PGA Tour player when they're surrounded by people and they're playing in the Masters and it's coming down to the back nine and somebody has a shot at Augusta that looks something like that because that sand is soft and they're hitting over something like this and they're crowded all around and you know like tigers or <laughs> oh, yeah. the pressure and there's probably water on the other side like well, number 12 right they hit it in the back bunker. They like in the back bunker and then they're hitting it and then it's downhill, slick as a garage floor, going down into that water. The, the pressure, now you didn't feel it. You were like this. I felt a little pressure. I felt a little pressure. That's what you want to feel is pressure. That's what makes this game fun out there. Whether you're playing out there by yourself and you're putting for par or birdie for the first time, or you are out there at the Masters and you're playing in front of all those people. That's what we play for. That's what makes it fun out here. Uh, just to give you props up to, to Jordan, 
Jordan played college golf at a little college down in Texas. He, as you said, well, that's the junior college. He was, uh, I believe, number two on the team. It fluctuated. It fluctuated. <laughs> okay, but it, it's high. At times. Yeah. At times, absolutely. Right. And and the number one player is actually playing on the PGA Tour. His name is Abraham Answer. He's top 30 in the world right now. He was a world beater back then, and he's still a world beater now. And and he takes full credit to challenging him for number one and making him a better player. Absolutely, he made me a better player. Again, please, we really appreciate it. If you can like us, please like me. I want to be liked. <laughs> and uh, write in your questions. Continue. It's raining here. And seriously, it, it's not pleasant. But we are here for a reason. People are sitting at home. People are scared. People have anxiety. And this is my worry. My worry isn't so much of the virus because I believe we're, we're putting in measures to stop it, I hope. My worry is for everybody at home with the anxiety that's being created by this. It's a media frenzy. Don't let it get to you. The sun will shine. We're all going to get through this. And that's why we're here. And that's why I thank these two for being out here to do this. Because we just decided the other day to put this together. On uh, two, uh, Monday. To yeah. put this together. And we threw it together and we came out here yesterday. And we got people watching and thanking us. And I hope we'll bring a little joy to you here. Yeah, we're going a little crazy. Sometimes silly. Sometimes stupid. Sometimes arrogant. But what we want to do is we just want to bring some some smiles to people out there that aren't as blessed as we are to be healthy and able to be outside and enjoy the golf course. And in saying that, go outside. Swing a golf club. You can practice. You can practice at your house. I'm going to come over here and you're going to see as they turn around, you might not have not noticed it. We got a bunch of props over here. Some things that you might have at your house. And we're going to go look at those and see if we can give you some drills to work on while you're sitting there. Come on. Always when you get out of the bunker. Get, those, get that sand off your feet. I always walk, walk in the house the with green. dirty feet. <laughs> <laughs> also, a shout out to Jim and Janet Parker. Uh, I know you couldn't make it, but I hope you're doing one. Well we're excited to see you next day, bro. Yeah. Hey, Deborah Levine. Yeah. Uh, she said, hey, Sandy shot mm -hmm. from the back of the bunker. She gives Jordan. Uh, credit for her Sandy Birdie last week. Woo! Well done. Good job. Keep it up. That is so cool. Good job. Thank you for writing there, yes, everybody. Thank you. thank you. It's super nice. It's exciting. This is fun and it's exciting. So, hey, do you got an axe at home? At home, you got a you got a grass cutter? <laughs> but maybe maybe have a rake. Jordan was talking about yesterday about practicing his grip, and if you missed yesterday, he was talking about. Well, how can you practice your grip at home? He goes, well, go go in the kitchen, get a wooden spoon, and as you're standing there, practice your grip. He had some great points. If you haven't seen yesterday, you can watch it. Um, he had some really great points about the grip and using two fit these uh, specific two fingers on your hand. I'm not going to show you which ones it is because I want you to be watching it. And then we also had a really, really, I think, a good thing about um, buying your hand up when you're setting up. But for example, here, here's your setup with a rake. If you got a rake or a broom, this could be a broom. This could be anything at home. You can set up, and the way you, what can you do at home as you set up? One thing I would do as you set up is really start understanding where your weight is on your feet. Because that starts everything. If the body is out of balance, 
you're going to be moving around in your swing, not in weird positions. And if you're in weird positions with your body, your arms are going to be in weirder positions. And if your arms are in weird positions, you're not the ball's going to be in weird areas of the golf course because you're going to be hitting it better. So one, where's your weight? People are often told, put it on the balls of your feet. I get that. That's athletic. But what we often see is when the people who are trying to get it on the balls of their feet, they're actually doing it, what, a little too much. And they're more on their toes or on the, the toes side of the ball of the foot. Try to find a way to get it even where it's equal on the balls of your feet to almost your heels. Don't, please don't take me literally. Everybody, body is set up different and balanced differently. What I'm trying to say is keep it as even as you can. There's nothing wrong with feeling a little bit on your heels. And once you have that, then you can practice your swing. Take time. So you do that. Now stand up. Now get set up. Where's your weight? Just on maybe a little bit. On, up. Just, just a little bit towards the toes. Not, not too much though but more to the center. Very good, now get down set up. Now she's gonna work on trying to get it balanced where she knows, she's a player, she can. She knows. You might have to work on it a little bit more, but is it balanced? Yes. Stand up. You got the time if you're sitting home and you're quarantined, do it. So do that again. Did you guys oh, catch what she just did with her feet? I think this is really good what she just did. You see how she's rocking a little bit? Why you rock, why'd you do that? So to put all my weight on my toes first to feel what how, how that feels and then to put all the weight on the heels now to feel how that feels. Now to find a medium between the toes and the heels. So right there. And de that's so great. And depending on your balance, I mean she's got great balance. Be careful about the getting all your weight on the heels. Let's maybe not get all our weight on the heels because uh, the, the, we don't need to be doing any gymnastics this morning. Now, once you get set up like that, what can you do? Well, this is good because it's a heavier object than a golf club. And that's good. You don't want something super heavy, but heavier than a golf club is good because then you can feel what? That little extra weight and you start feeling more of the tension in here and what parts, different parts of your body, what muscles are using. And then what we say is, all you gotta do is just take it and swing it back and hold it here. Now notice the great thing that Trish is doing is she's still staring there. She's not looking back, which is good. Kind of keeping this area. But now she can just hold it here for a few seconds. And she can say to herself, hmm, Trisha, what do I feel? Which muscles am I feeling? Which muscles are you feeling? I can feel a little bit on my upper back, a little bit on my right glute, right hamstring a little bit. So upper, in case you didn't hear, upper, upper back, uh, glute, right side. She's feeling it. Now she's just gonna bring it back to neutral. Why does she do that? Well, she's feeling which muscles are being engaged. But she's also, by doing it very slowly, is she's seeing how each of those muscles are working together in sync and that's what training is it's like a dancer is going to go dance and practice dancing that's all about the muscles moving in sync and 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 flowing together that needs to be learned and so many people with golf is they're trying to get the mechanics of getting the left arm straight getting the hands like this trying to get in these crazy positions but what's not being learned is how the muscles are working together with the balance. And that's why you're having so much trouble. So by doing a drill like this where it's slow and you're holding it, you're feeling those muscles. So let's do it again, set up. And it's gonna be really slow. Go, 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 hold. Continue looking over there. What do you feel? What do you feel uh, is your weight? Where do you feel your weight? And speak up when you do. My, I would say a little bit on, more towards my right side. 
but it more towards the inside of your inside right foot. Of my right so it's foot. not coming way out here. No, no. And what we see is a lot of people when they first do this drill, they'll go, hold on to it, and they'll go, and I'm gonna pull you a little bit, so, so go with me. We'll see them, and they'll be like that. You see how my left foot has come off the ground almost? Their left foot came off the ground and they're here. And now that's where you get accused of the swaying because because you get this much. And then it's swaying and then you try to keep your head too still and you can't get the good. So by doing that, I'm going to do that one more time. Mm -hmm. You're back here and now she can go, oh, well, I don't even need to hold it for a few seconds. I can feel all of them off balance. Get back to reset, neutral. Now let's do this one really good. Ready? Back, slowly, 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 slowly. Now, when she's done this three, four, five, ten times well, she can do it, make sure she's in a good area here, and now where's she gonna stop? She's gonna stop at where the ball is, at impact. You don't move, I'm gonna let go. What muscles do you feel now? On the left side for sure, uh, a little bit on my hips over here to the left. The weight transition, my right foot's come off the ground. And now what she can do is hold this for a few seconds because now she can, what she's doing is, especially with most people out there, with this being your non-dominant side, holding this position right now, what she's teaching, she's training her muscles. She's training her muscles to understand where they need to be at one point of the swing, which is impact. And if she can't train them now, can I borrow this sure. for a second? Step out of the way for a second. If she can't train them that way, she's not going to be able to train them just hitting ball after ball on the range doing this. So she's able to isolate. Please come in. I did. Your dad wouldn't like me anymore if I hit you with that. So. You can use household items like this, whether it's a broom, whether it's a rake, to work on your swing at home and you take the time to do it. Other things that you could do at home. Hey, these are weights. These are eight pounds, you could get ones or twos. You're sitting at home right now. The key is this. Are you healthy enough? Do you feel good? Well, this next time as we're coming into this virus, the healthiest people are gonna be in the best positions to come through. So we do need to talk about health. And I'm not saying anybody here is unhealthy and I hope I please, I don't wanna come across that way at all. But all you also know people that are unhealthy. And I think it's, it's up to people that are healthy to, to help people who are unhealthy. Sometimes you, they don't know they're unhealthy. I could go to my story where a few years ago I was unhealthy in, in, the, in the frustrations of building a business and, and relationships and everything that goes with life. And uh, I thought I was healthy and I look back, I know I wasn't healthy and I've been on this health kick and I've never felt better about life ever, ever. I mean, it's amazing. And, I see a lot of the demographic that comes to see us and they're successful people. Um, and, but they could be having so much more fun if they were in better shape. And I hope nobody takes offense to that at all. I'm not saying it that way. Because the people I've met are such great, 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 great people. But they express their frustration to me uh, in simple things like their golf swing where they can't hit the golf ball as well as they want to hit it as consistent or they can't play as much because it takes a day or two or three or four to recover anybody out there takes a couple of days to recover because the back or the hip etc well you can correct that it's never too late it's never too difficult you can always start the so simple and Listen, if you don't got a couple of pet this, a couple of these, take a couple of cans of chunky soup. I mean, listen, my my grocery store had nothing, no chunkies, nothing left. 
So water maybe bottle. you guys got them. Water bottle. Water bottle. Wow, that's such a great. That's, seriously, take a couple of water bottles and start walking around with them in your house today. If that's where you're sequestered in your house, if you're quarantined, you know, as you're walking around. Get a couple of water bottles or soup or something. And just as you're walking, do it. Why? It's extra weight. It is strengthening your fingers. It is strengthening your wrists. It is strengthening your forearm, your upper arm. It's strengthening my shoulders. I can feel these. Walk around with them. Stretch with them. If you're standing around, I mean, I guess there's new news on, but I'm sure it's the same old, same old. Hopefully everybody is all right. I, I don't want to sound like that. But just, I mean, you could just stand and just do this. What's the point? The point is I want, I want everybody to stay healthy out there. We are blessed to be able to put this show on to you today. I hope it was entertaining. We hope to get better every, every day at doing it. It will get better if you send in your suggestions and things that you'd like to see, questions that you have, like us, share it with other friends that you that are golfers that might need a smile, even if it's laughing at how stupid I am. It doesn't matter. We just want to bring a smile. Um, I know Jordan, I know Trisha, they both wish all your families health, correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah, also, big shout out to Michigan Mike and D White and also Margie Shapiro. I had you in class, it was good to see you, glad to hear from you again. So keep liking this page, keep commenting, and keep watching us. Thank you so much for joining us, whoever liked us and subscribed us, thank you so much. I heard, I, they were just, I just heard that we have a big following here. Oh, yeah. Is that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. We're blessed to be here. Again, Joe Williams, Tom Burley, Thanks, guys. Director of Golf, Joe Williams, Head Pro Tom Burley, GM, Steve Rosen, and, and the whole team here at IW, the whole outside staff. Phys Ed, we love you. Thank you for entertaining everybody out here. And Listen, God bless, stay healthy. We're gonna be back on tomorrow morning, same time, same stations. Have a great night. Hey, before we let you go, let's uh, thank again, uh, Deborah Ahenbaugh Levine. She says, thanks for trying a new format. Tim Parker says, thank you so much. It was great watching you all. Steve, Steve Levin says, thanks so much. You brought many smiles to us this morning. Thanks guys. Kissimmee, uh, Kissimmee Mike says, uh, hey, thanks, Mark, and everyone else involved. Iris Newman, thanks so much. Very informative and motivating. Can't wait to attend a school in the future. Iris and Terry. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. And over here on uh, YouTube, we've got Lou S. Thanks for doing this. I'm going to swing outside right after this. Please keep it up Woo! if you can and be well. Uh, Kyla says, it looks wet out there. Kyla. You got it. You, uh, uh, it, yes, it is. Stephen <laughs> Pally says thanks because we answered his question earlier. Uh, and I think uh, we've got Carl who asked a question. We'll probably cover that tomorrow. Um, and a few other questions there, but that's great. Have a great night. Thank Stay you. safe. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Bye-bye.